You'll get the hang of that takedown. I had trouble learning it at first, too. Had his wife taken. I don't think he'll ever be the same as he was. Damn shame. I told the rangers up at the station to keep an eye out, but there's just too much ground out there for them to cover. Carla was a knockout. Whenever Boone walked around with her, he always had this funny grin on his face like he couldn't believe his luck. I know we couldn't. That wasn't the only reason she stuck out, though. That girl never minced words. If she'd had better food or hospitality, she'd let you hear it. Trouble was, she usually had. I don't think she meant it. She really was a sweet girl. I think she just wanted to remind herself that there's still nicer places in this world than Novak. Who could blame her for that? Hey, uh, wait a sec. I know what I said, but if you find yourself by Ranger Station Charlie, let me know what you find. I'd be interested. I hope you're finding everything to your liking. How should I put it? I guess you could say she was kinda like a cactus flower. Real pretty to look at, but there was just no getting close to her. She never did take to living here. She liked the big lights and fast living of New Vegas. I got the feeling she was trying to get Boone to leave with her, but I guess she got tired of waiting. Watch out for strength. How you doing? Welcome back. Can I get you anything? Can't say we spoke much. Boone did most of the buying for him. She was in the store once, but she didn't stay long. Had a look on her face like she'd smelled something sour. But far as I can remember, the gift shop smelled fine. Well, fine as it always does. Come back soon now. What's going on, man? Man, everybody. That girl didn't have one friend in this whole town. She didn't want any. She wanted to sit in her room all day and make herself miserable, and she went out of her way to be rude. She upset a lot of people. You wouldn't have liked her either. Believe me, when I heard the news, my first thought was, I owe somebody big. I figured Boone would come around after a while. But he hasn't. I'm starting to think that if he doesn't find her, things will never go back to the way they were. Yeah, see ya. Hey. sent you. I ain't talking. They tried to get me to talk before, but I didn't say nothing. And I don't aim to now, by gum. We'll just see about that. You come any closer and I'm liable to stick you with my sticking knife. Old stick is feeling mighty ornery this day. 
You sure now? It's kind of hard to hear you. Okay, okay, just speak up a little. But not so much that they hear you. They got people everywhere, always listening. Seen it all. Seen shadowy folk come to his room and leave again in the middle of the night. Thought one might have gone in the lobby, too, for a spell. Could be that person went in to get something. Or used the John, maybe. Mighty interesting either way, you ask me. I thought it was cannibals, come to eat us all for sure. So I kept out of sight. But now I know better. More rat men. Come up from the underneath to steal young women with promises of riches and fancy mud mansions with all the latest designer appliances. They covered our lady folks' long hair for wigs, it said, being either bald or balding themselves. If anyone asks, we never spoke. You've seen them too, haven't you? Cause they know I ain't just barking here. Them quack doctors can say what they want about all the rad scorpion stings that done pierced my skull. <laughs> There's been things of a disturbing nature going on at the McBride Corral. Seems every night one of their herd meets a most unnatural death. And always there's holes all over the body. Work of the chupacabra, the livestock vampire, says Nobark. But they don't pay no mind. Too many holes, they say, and there's bullets in them. Well, says Nobark, we got a chupacabra with an automatic weapon. And that's when they get real quiet, because now they see the predicament we're in. I come face to face with the chupacabra himself one night, whilst I was investigating whether this gecko was hiding his treasure from me. He was the meanest, ugliest chupacabra you could imagine. Had two heads and fangs down to the ground. Best I could tell anyways, since when he come up to me he was invisible. Had himself a blunderbuss, what would rotate and shoot bullets real fast out of a backpack. Never seen nothing like it. Walked right past me having an argument with somebody. But I only saw one chupacabra, so I guess the other fella had to be invisible too. Only more invisible than the other one. Folks will tell you that they seen ghouls up near the rocket factory. Sensationalist hooey, cooked up by superstitious yokels, seeing phantoms of their own imagining. Evening. Between you and me, I don't... What can I do for you? I don't think she studied at an accredited institution. Look who's here. What brings you here? Boom. That's that sniper fella. Works in the dinosaur, right? I only met them but once or twice. They seem real happy together. I really ought to get to know them better. They're probably nice folk. Nice of you to visit. Hey there. In from out of town, ain't you? Name's Dusty. 
Well, to be honest with you, I don't really know them two as well as I might. I remember she had an edge about her, like she'd rather be someplace else. This kind of life ain't for everyone, that's for darn sure. Losing don't describe it. It's a massacre. A few more days and there won't be nothing left to lose. Every night around midnight, Alice and I wake up to some crazy hollering and gunshots. You'd think the world was ending all over again. But it's just one animal each night. They don't take it or carve it up or nothing. Just leave it there, all full of holes. We'd be grateful. Especially if you find them before they get my whole stock. But don't go getting yourself killed over it. Alice and I'll find a way to make do. Always have. Beg your pardon, mister, but them two-headed beeves ain't worth getting shot over. Not to mention what would happen if half of what Nobark says is true. Best we can hope is that whoever's doing this will move on or get tired of it. I just hope it happens while we still got animals left. Whoever it is, I don't think they're from around town. Seems like they've taken to shooting from the west side. So long. What brings you here? Wow, that's the strangest thing. Last time it happened, I could swear I heard someone cry out for help. Sounded like a big fella. But when we finally got up the gumption to go look outside, all we found was our cattle. And I know what they sound like when they get upset. I can't imagine what went on. Dusty can probably tell you more about it. Oh, we keep to ourselves for the most part. Try not to pry. Ain't that we don't appreciate what she's done, managing this town like she has, but I worry she feels that way anyhow. Not that there ain't others who pry around here. That no-bark was skulking around our yard last week. <laughs> I thought he was our cow killer. Part of me wishes I could see things like he sees them. All full of mystery. Oh. We... I'm not sure who started it. It wasn't a very nice name, but he took to calling himself by it, so we all had to. I don't even remember what his real name is. Anyway, I think it comes from that expression that people say when you're crazy, that not all of your dogs are barking. I hope you're finding everything to your liking. Nothing that wouldn't be wrong with any man who loses a wife, I... I know he thinks she was kidnapped, but I'm not so sure she didn't just run off on her own. You could tell she was thinking about it ever since they arrived. We're in a little desert oasis. No well, there's Dinky, the town mascot. Up the roadways to the west, there's Repcon. There's been some sinister characters out there lately, so you may want to stay clear. Other than that, nothing to do but take it easy and enjoy good company. Well, up north the ways, you'll see a big tower. That's Helios 1. Used to be a power plant in it. And there's a town just east of here called Nelson. But we got our wonderful snipers keeping an eye in that direction, and so far, the slavers have left us alone.
Well, let's see. Dusty McBride's been losing some Brahmin, but that's probably the heat more than anything. Honestly, it's been real quiet. Ranger Andy's still hurt, but we got these two gentlemen snipers watching the road day and night, keeping the trash out of Novak. They've been a blessing. What? Any word on Station Charlie? Welcome back. Can I get you? Welcome back. They're scale replicas of the real thing. From... Well, they unloaded what they had left on the dock. What's going on, man? You've seen the... I don't trust a man that doesn't have something strange going on about him, because it means he's hiding it from you. If a man's wearing his pants on his head, or if he says his words backwards from time to time, you know it's all laid out there for you. But if he's friendly to strangers and keeps his home spick and span, more often than not he's done something even his own ma couldn't forgive. If anyone asks, we never spoke. I hope you're... I hope you're fine. You can jump out the window for all I can. You got. What? What? Ghost.
Hello there. It's good to see a friendly face. I almost took you for a raider, I did. Name's Malcolm. Malcolm Holmes. Don't suppose you'd care to trade. I'm missing a few essentials and... Ah, oh, screw this. Lying just ain't in my nature. I'll tell it to you straight. I've been following you for a good bit now. It started off innocently enough. I was traveling, as I often do, and happened to observe you picking up one of those blue star caps. You didn't show any reaction to it, so I figured you didn't know what you'd gotten your hands on. There's an old wasteland legend that says somewhere out there is a fabulous treasure from before the war. Those caps with the blue star on them, the tale goes, are the key to that treasure. They're called Sunset Sarsaparilla Stars. No one knows. Money, weapons, water. It is, or maybe was, something of value, and that's enough to get people motivated. All over the place. You'd think they'd all have been picked clean by now, but somehow, new bottles keep appearing in the machines. Some say it's old Festus that does it, hoping someone will finally collect enough caps to earn the treasure. Other than bottles, you'll just have to scavenge. You can find caps in the unlikeliest of places, and blue star caps are no exception. It's said that the treasure is guarded by a man named Festus. It's also said he's been around since the war. That'll make him pretty damn old, but... No problem. If you do end up trying to collect more stars, watch out for a man named Alan Marks. He's killed several people for their stars already. Thank you. 